Is Disney's Fort Wilderness Campground worth it? Find out next. Welcome to the channel, I'm Liz. And I'm Paul, and these are exciting times to push past fear, build confidence, and live amazing. And you might actually be living amazing if you happen to go to Disney's Fort Wilderness Campground. Now, it's not for everyone. So in this video, Paul and I are gonna talk about what we like about the campground and kind of give you a little bit of an overview. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it is a little pricey. I'll say that up front, um, so you're prepared for it. There was certainly a sticker shock when I initially booked this thing. So if you don't know, we're full-time RVers. We've been on the road over three years, and we typically spend how much a night per camp? I'd say on average, it's about 50 bucks a night when it's out of pocket. We have a membership with Thousand Trails. I'll put a link to that video where we actually pay $50 a month is what that works out. You know, we basically, yeah, camp yeah, for free. Yeah. But this is a splurge for us. Like I said, it's not for everyone, but you might find it's for use. Fort Wilderness has 799 campsites and 409 cabins. All of this on 700 acres on Bay Lake. The campground is located in Orlando. It's at Disney World, actually Buena Vista. Yeah, Lake Buena Vista is, uh, is what they call the town. Mm -hmm. I guess it's a town that is owned by Disney, I think. <laughs> Pretty much, so this is a Disney property. And let's talk about some of the pros and the reason why we booked it. Well, the convenience factor. We had four day tickets to go to Disney World and Epcot are the two parks that we chose. We figured that we would wanna do you know, a few hours, come back to the rig, re-energize, and then go back and, and do the evening and watch fireworks and that sort of thing. If you know anything at all about the traffic in this area, it's horrendous. Now, Paul is from Southern California. He knows LA traffic. What do you think about this traffic? Oh, it's, it's about equal to uh, what I'm used to. It, it's just bumper to bumper. Well, we went out one day and we're like, never again. So if you're like us and don't like traffic, everything is right here so that you won't need to drive. So if you don't know, besides Disney World and Epcot, there's Animal Kingdom <laughs> and Hollywood Studios. And we are, as you can tell, we are actually videoing right here at Fort Wilderness and behind us is the boat dock. And this was a big reason that we chose to be at Fort Wilderness. And the we chose the area that we're in. We got some inside information from somebody who had been here a few times. Hi Gus, thanks for the info. And he said to get into the, the 100 or 200 loop and you'll be right by the docks walking distance. It takes us, what, two minutes to, to walk right. here? So what we have is the boat dock that takes us directly to the Magic Kingdom. It's about a 10 or 15 minute ride. The boats are very regular. Probably while we're, while we're filming here, you'll probably see a boat come. And from the Magic Kingdom, we can get on a monorail and get to the other parks, or there's also bus service right where we are. Now where we are is near the settlement, and that includes a lot of different things. There's a trading post, there's a tavern, restaurant, snack bar, and there's also a ranch, so you can do pony rides. If you see over our shoulder, there's there's pontoon boats. You can rent those and uh, go out onto the lake and spend a day on the lake. They I... have guided bass fishing excursions. We learned that we could watch the fireworks at Magic Kingdom right here. And there's also a boat parade every night right here. So you have the fireworks every night and the boat parade. We could just walk two minutes. Yep. And that was a big plus. The fireworks at Magic Kingdom. You can't see the ones from Epcot from here. So I mentioned the pony rides and trail rides. There's bike, canoe, and kayak rentals. There's Segway tours. There's the marina and boat launch. We mentioned the fishing excursions. There's a restaurant, tavern, takeout, snack bars. You can even order from your phone and have everything you know, ready waiting for you. There's a game arcade, tennis. There's actually sports equipment rentals so that you can play basketball, shuffleboard, and tennis. And pickleball, I'm sure, right? There's, I don't know. I think there's pickleball courts. I, I'm, I swear I saw them. I'm, I, uh, if you know, let us know in the comments. Yeah. There's also a convenience store, laundry showers, dog park, playground, golf cart rentals. Now we recommend a renting a golf cart because this is so huge if you're not in the 100s or 200s if you're down closer to the front entrance or in the meadows which is about midway and you still want to take the boat you may find that the golf cart is the way to go yeah it'd be a, it would be quite a walk from there to to get here uh, but you can get the bus there's an inn. yeah there's a bus there's bus stops all over the place and the buses will take you, bring you here or take you to the outpost up. The outpost is where you come in. There's two kinds of buses. There's 
in the campground bus that'll take you to various parts of the campground, like a shuttle bus. And then there are the between the Disney Park buses. Right. So you've got that. Now, more amenities. <laughs> There's a two and a half mile running trail. They also have events every night. They have movie nights for the kids, campfire nights. There's family trivia, bingo, giant games, cornhole hole challenge, and even crafts like tie-dye. And they even have, for the adults, they have something called wine and woodwork. So you get to make something and drink wine. And drink wine. Oh, boy. We didn't even mention that there's a swimming pool, did we? There's a whole big oh, yeah. area for yeah. kids. Yeah. You know, there's a swimming pool and there's all kinds of kids' activities. I mean, because it's Disney World. It's yeah. what you expect, right? What is that noise? <laughs> The dock is squeaking. It doesn't it sound like an injured bird. Yeah. <laughs> but so a boat just went by. So Yeah. Yeah. The waves. The the wake is is rocking the yeah. dock. So yeah, yeah. So what we're looking at is Bay Lake. This is the same lake that the Contemporary Hotel sits on and we just cross it and then we go over a water bridge and then we're into another lake which is the lake you may be familiar with for going to Disney World. It's the one where you take the steamboat across or the or the monorail around and we go right there. And our total time here is a week and what we felt like is that this maximizes our time at Disney because we don't spend that time sitting in traffic trying to find a parking space at each of the Disney parks. Yeah, our initial plan, we even had it booked, was we were going to stay in a uh, Thousand Trails Park that's, what, about eight miles away. We decided after talking to Gus, we decided it was just worth it for us to be here to maximize our time at the parks. Now for us, Disney's a special event. I grew up in Florida, I went to Disney just about every weekend. I had my high school grad night at Disney, but I hadn't gone in like 20 or 30 years. So I really wanted to make the most of it and then talk about your Disney experience. I lived about five miles from Disneyland in Anaheim. Actually, I lived in Orange, but Disneyland was in Anaheim. The last year in my sticks and bricks life, I had a annual pass for Disneyland, so I would go literally once a week. So you hadn't gone in over three years because of being on the yeah, road. Right. I hadn't gone in 20 or 30 years. So to put it mildly, we both were very excited. So we felt it was worth the splurge to do it oh, yeah. just for that reason. Yeah. If you have a big family or you've got the grandkids coming, having all these activities to do right here, I think would make it easier for you. Now we should talk about the campsites. Now our campsite is not that big. Now what we have for that in the 100s and 200s the campsites are small we're you know that's not a problem for us we have a uh, i think it's listed as a 50 foot site so we our 35 foot fifth wheel fits in there and we can still put the truck in front of it with, without being into the road so it's plenty big it's not it's not super spacious it's not like the it's not as wide as the spot we came from, you know, in Sebastian, that was that was a bigger spot. But there's still a lot of privacy in the back. The oh, back yeah. area is, is pretty good. Yep. So we have no complaints about it. If you do want a bigger campsite, the 1000s are more roomy. They're more state park-like. If you need a bigger site, yep. you have that option. So here's an insider tip. We went to Epcot yesterday and we had asked one of the rangers here what how to get there. And they said, well, you take a bus from the settlement to the outpost and then catch the Epcot bus from the outpost and takes you directly there. Great, it, you know, we had great luck so far with the boats, but so we figured we'd have the same kind of luck with the, with the buses. Mm -hmm. Well, we caught the bus up here pretty quickly. And then we went down to the outpost and waited for about 30 minutes before a bus showed up. It ended up taking us over an hour to get there. We think we can cut that almost in half we think it'll be quicker if we take the boat directly to Magic Kingdom, the express monorail to the gate and ticketing, and then the Epcot monorail into Epcot. Um, the buses, you now we have to admit that we took the bus in an off-peak time. It was just about 12.30 in the afternoon. They probably weren't running as many. Let us know if you have taken the buses and you find that faster. We actually talked to somebody who claims that taking the car to the parking lot is faster than the boat. We don't believe that. The boats come pretty much every 15 or 20 minutes from a half hour, an hour before the park opens to an hour after the park closes. Right. The park is open 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. Yep. And yep. we've never had to wait more than 10 or 15 minutes for the boat. Never. On nope. either end. And we've gone over a few times. That's the other thing. We had tickets 
for the Magic Kingdom and Epcot. We were here a day where we had a ticket for neither, but you can still take the boat over and ride the monorail and be around the perimeter of the park. Yeah, if you've not been here, I, we did that so that we could kind of get our bearings where everything was. That was helpful, I thought. Yeah, another tip is if you're you know, older or maybe low energy, some of you know that <laughs> I've had surgery just two months ago. And I'm old. <laughs> So it really took a lot of energy. If we could do it all over again, maybe we don't need four days in a row because we were doing about 16,000 steps a day and a lot of standing at Disney World and Epcot. And that was wearing us both out. So if we did it again. I think we'd do every other day. That would be perfect. Give yourself a day in between to, to recharge your batteries. Or explore, if you like to shop, Disney Springs, which we didn't talk about, is a shopping and dining mecca. And the bus will take you there too. Yeah, if you're used to um, Anaheim's Disneyland or the Disney parks in, in Anaheim, there's something there called Downtown Disney. And I assume that Disney Springs is equivalent to that. So shops and restaurants, that sort of thing. <laughs> well, this was our first time at Fort Wilderness, but it probably won't be our last. We loved it. In fact, we've talked to people that have come year after year after year. Yeah, so if you've been to Fort Wilderness and you have some pro tips, leave them in the comment section and we'll see you in the next video. That's right, thank you. Oh, make it stop. <laughs>